I'm Kelsey Hubbard, joined again by Mary Anastasia O'Grady, who writes the America's column for the Wall Street Journal. And Mary, you write about Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez, and he's been doing some, uh, some things lately, taking some actions uh, in an attempt to sort of get the U.S.'s attention. What has he been doing and why? Well, a couple of weeks ago, he had some Russian jets land in Venezuela. Uh, then he invited uh, a Russian uh, flotilla to come to the Caribbean and do some joint exercises. But just this past week, he announced that uh, the Russians are going to help him build a nuclear reactor in Venezuela. So that obviously got the attention of a few people. What was Washington's reaction, and are they taking him seriously? Well, you know, Washington so far hasn't fallen into the trap of engaging with rhetoric with him, which I think is a good idea because that's partially what he wants to do. Uh, once Washington starts attacking the president of your country, the idea is that a lot of people would sort of rally around the flag and, and that would help support him. And he's been losing popularity because there are a lot of corruption scandals and he hasn't really delivered on his, his revolutionary promises. Um, so their reaction has been pretty low key so far. And Venezuela is a pretty big oil producer, and as the value of the U.S. dollar has fallen, oil prices have skyrocketed. So how has this strengthened Chavez's position? Well, the um, the, the the drop in the the increase in in. Uh in oil prices, because it's priced in dollars, has made him feel very powerful. And he's used those sort of windfall revenues to kind of go around the world and try to get support for his revolution from uh, countries that are not allied with the United States or the West. And you mentioned in your article the importance of the U.S. supporting our allies in that region. Is there anything else that, that the U.S. should be doing at this time? Well, it's very important for the U.S. to send a very clear signal to Latin America that we support our allies in the region, and Colombia is our most important ally there, and we have not been really following policies that would support Colombia. In fact, the Democrats seem to be working against the Democratic uh, President uh, Alvaro Uribe in Colombia. And uh, as I mentioned in my column this week, they've even been meeting with uh, very um, controversial figures uh, from South America who are very close to Chavez, very close to the FARC. Uh, one of them, uh, who's, who's featured in my column this week, is Piedad Cordoba. I mean, she is, she's under investigation by the Colombians for her uh, activities with the FARC, which is, you know, a terrorist group. And yet, she can come to Washington and she meets with Nancy Pelosi and Jim McGovern. So I think basically there's a mixed signal going on there. Our friends in the region don't know if we really stand by them or not. And I think if we want to combat Hugo Chavez's activities and things like nuclear reactors, we need to speak with one voice and support our allies in the region. And the place to start with that is Colombia. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. I've been speaking with Mary Anastasia O'Grady, who writes the America's column for The Wall Street Journal. I'm Kelsey Hubbard in New York.